The Seekers were the first Australian group to top the overseas charts. I never really felt that I had what it took to be a real pop star. And I now realise in hindsight that once you have a number one record around the world, you're a pop star. <laughs> but I was still thinking, oh, well, one day when I lose a bit more weight or, you know, when I look a bit better or, I don't know, when I get a bit more confident, then I'll be a real pop star, you see. The Seekers became our most successful musical export of the 60s. You know, when you've made a name as recording artists, you wonder how people will react when they eventually see you in the flesh. Mums everywhere preferred Athel and Bruce to Mick and Keith. Thank you. Thank you very, very much. And goodbye, because I'm afraid tonight the carnival really is over. <laughs> In 1968, for their final appearance, the Seekers chose a song much loved by the audience. And it's a very emotional song for people, and no question about it. They were literally grief-stricken, and fans sat there with tears rolling down their faces while we sang this song. Like People knew the story behind the song. In the actual lyric in the Russian language, it's about a Cossack leader, a hero, and he had to leave his either leave his lady love behind when they were going off uh, to war, or he indeed Tom thought the legend was that he threw her overboard to prove his masculinity that it was okay, you know, even though he loved her so much, but that he could be more of a man than needing the woman. That could have easily been the trigger that changed the ratio of female artists, the one that I'd experienced in the 60s. I think it's very likely that it would have encouraged women to have a go.